Hey guys, what's up? It's the Electrical Code Coach here, and this is the Electricians in Action, where we get together every morning and we talk about the code before we go out and fight the good fight. I'm so thankful I get to be a part of your journey, and this channel is designed to help you become everything you can be in life, business, and in the electrical industry. If these videos are helping you, please hit that thumbs up button, and please subscribe for more videos like these. Let's go ahead and get into today's lesson. Hey guys, what's up? So today we're going to be looking at automatic transfer switches and I'm really excited. So the one on the right hand has been pre-wired and uh, I didn't do the work, but it looks pretty clean. And the one on the left hand is unwired. I wanted to show you both. And in this scenario today, we're going to imagine that you're coming straight from the meter with no disconnect in between. And this is going to be your first point of disconnect. And I just want to talk to you about a few things. And then this week we're going to further expound. So on the left hand side, if you look up here, right here is where you're going to make your utility connections. So you're going to come from the bottom of your meter and you're going to pipe over or whatever the scenario is and then you're going to bring those conductors all the way up to where it says N1 and N2. You'll actually remove that plastic cover right there and then it will reveal your lugs for you. Your next set of connections that you're going to make are going to be going back into the customer's home. So essentially with a transfer switch all you're doing is interrupting the line that's coming from the uh, meter and is going to the how the panel inside the house or you know wherever it's going so what you're going to do here is there's two sets of lugs what you'll do is you'll remove that clip right there and remove that red piece and it's going to expose your lugs there are two sets there are ones that are closer to the back of the can and then ones that are closer to the front of that red piece you, you know always check your model and find out what the design is. But on this specific design, the ones that are closer to the back of the can are going to be the customer load. That's gonna be the wires that you take to the panel that go inside and feed your indoor panel. And then there's a second set of lugs that are closer to the red piece there on the outside. And it is actually going to be the ones that you run the generator, the generated source uh, to, the generated cable. And what you'll do is those will be the hots that are going to refire up the bus bar uh, you know after the transfer switch has made its changeover all right so let's go ahead and look at another piece here right here I want to note very quickly that the lower bar below this circle is going to be the isolated neutral bar if you notice here in our picture they have got it bonded together with the back of the can that's assuming that this is going to be the first point of disconnect these are however are listed to be a you know beyond the first point of disconnect uh, what we call a sub panel so if that is the case if this is the second point of disconnect you're just going to remove that green jumper and you'll follow your manufacturer's instructions but you're just going to remove that green jumper that will isolate the neutrals from the grounds with this being the first point of disconnect we're going to leave that intact i do want to note always check any factory connections just to make sure that nothing is loose we've had several of these just be completely loose like falling out and then you'll want to uh, follow your torque uh, manufacturer spec from there so in this case if those if both of those bars are bonded you could legally land to either bar as long as your wire size you know was correct let's move on to the bottom here so down here on the left hand side that's where you're going to put your communication cables with the generator that's going to let it know when power drops out that's going to keep your battery charged that's going to signal when power comes back on and if you look right here in the center in between the two is where you're going to see your um you know your you know your main breaker and what's going to happen is when the the utility power drops out what's going to happen is that it's going to sense it it's going to tell the generator to start the generator is going to start and then within about 10 seconds it's going to automatically transfer over it's going to block out the utility side and it's going to energize the lugs that are down here below the red piece that i showed you and then when it senses that there's power back it's going to automatically transfer back over which is going to re-energize the utility conductors to the load side of the customer and after a cycle of cool down time it's going to cut off the generator if we look over here on the one that's been pre-wired you can kind of see this all play out on the top side they have the uh, the utility conductors on the bottom side they have the load going back to the customer's house and then they have the generator cable feeding the generator so you know 
just some basics today. Just kind of wanted to get our feet wet into the automatic transfer switch, how it works, and how it looks when it's been wired. And uh, let's go ahead. I can't wait to get uh, to catch up tomorrow. This is the Electricians in Action. Hit that thumbs up button if these videos are helping you. Remember, the only way that you lose is if you quit. Let's get out here and get it today. Don't forget the reasons that you're doing this. It's the reasons that are going to give results. Let's get to it.